All right, welcome into Market Day Report. I'm Scott Shelley, otherwise known as the Cow Guy. Yesterday was the Mad Cow Guy. Today I'm a little bit, there's a little bit more pep in my step, right? So we've got a little bit more green on the screen. We've kind of recovered a little bit of yesterday's carnage. Why don't we see where we uh, traded overnight? Let's take a look at what's happening in that corn overnight. Look at that, up five in that Deese corn contract. But you know what, Deese is about to go off the board, so let's focus on March. That was also up five at 572 and a half. Right, kind of in the middle of the overnight range there. That's okay. May was up four and a half cents. Let's see if we have anything similar over in the beanies. Uh, soybeans, they were also higher, uh, bouncing back a tad. Nine cents higher in the Jan. That's uh, 12.26 and a quarter. Not bad there. We had March and May both up seven cents overnight. So we'll take that. Um, it's just a lot m more fun to go through these prices when you've got that green up there. Look at this. Wheat in Chicago, March up eight and a quarter cents. 7.95 and a half, making a move towards that $8 level. We still have an eight in front of it when it comes to May. So we've got some decent gains over in the Chicago wheat. What about Kansas City wheat? The hard red wheat in Kansas City, uh, about five cents across the board. We got March up four and a half, 8.26 and three quarters. May was up four and three quarters cents, 8.26 and three quarters as well. So the March May spread is even. How about that? Uh, spring wheat. Let's see what's happening in Minneapolis. We've got the March contract up eight and three quarters cents. There you go, a 10, 18 and three quarters. Still has a 10 in front of it. May was able to hold on to its 10 handle. Seven and a half cents higher at 10 even, well, 10, oh, seven and a half. So that settled at $10 even last night. Put on seven and a half cents. So well into that $10 range. And then let's take a look. This is the only one that was a little bit, uh, suffered a little bit still overnight. We're still off in that March contract. March cotton off. 91 points at 105.50. Again, we've got Deese off buck uh, 24 at 110. That was at 120 about four days ago. How about that for you? All right, let's bring in Brian Hoops from Midwest Market Solutions. Brian and I have been talking a lot with each other lately, both uh, television and radio. Um, Brian, what do you think? Uh, the floor is yours, but uh, give us your day after a kind of uh, <laughs> point of view. Yeah, good morning, Scott. It's really nice way to start the morning off when we're higher like this. But as uh, I'm sure you've you've said before, and I've said it to my customers, it's not how you start the day; it's how you finish. And we didn't finish very strongly yesterday. We're starting off strong, but boy, we'd love to see some follow through into the morning hours. We have a, a private sale of corn, 150,000 metric tons to Columbia, that's going to provide us some support. Weekly EIA report will be out this morning as well. That is expected to be friendly for for corn. And then you have a crushings report coming out this afternoon, and that is expected to be bullish for soybean meal. We're going to be near record crush after uh, you know a big improvement over last month. So if you look at those fundamentals, it should, looks like we should be higher and trade higher through the closing bell. The question will be is some of these outside markets, uh, stock market is higher, crude oil is higher, dollar is a little softer. Will they sustain those trends or will crude oil get punished again and, and stock market turn lower? And that could drag the grain markets off of these uh, early morning highs, and, you know, unless we see a, just a massive amount of uh, fun buying. But there was a lot of selling yesterday, technicals being triggered. So hopefully we can get back to more of these uh, other fundamentals I was talking about as far as uh, EIA production and, and crushings and that sort of thing. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And I think that crude oil is a big part of that. Obviously, the equities are too. And we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. But crude oil, I mean, think about it. At one point in time, was was off 20%. I mean, can you imagine taking 20% off of beans or corn right now? I mean, boy, oh boy, that's uh, pretty significant. And obviously, the crude oil, what it, you know, uh, soybean oil and ethanol, it, you know, flows all the way through, obviously, with the energy too. So, Something we have to keep an eye on. So if we see crude oil stay healthy all day today and the equities don't roll over, I mean, I, I, I would have to say that I think that gives us a good chance of finishing in the green on the screen. So I would agree. Yeah. We're going to take a deep breath on that one because so far so good. <laughs> Yesterday was a little bit different, better than bruised. We're going to go away, pay some bills. We're going back and talk livestock with Brian Hoops after these messages. Welcome back to Market Day Report. As you can see, I got a little bit bigger smile on my face today than we did yesterday. I'm Scott Sheldon, otherwise known as the Cow Guy. If you want to get to know and uh, get to know me better, see what I write, see what we publish, uh, go to Scott the Cow Guy at Scott the Cow Guy on Twitter. That's uh, where you get most of it. But uh, I write for about two or three different newspapers. Uh, we put some stuff out. You'll see all my other TV hits. So it's a, a good place to kind of get a grounding about where I'm coming from and how I'm bringing these numbers to you because. Um, I feel these things every day like you do, too, because these markets are your money. Now, speaking of that, let's get a look at these markets because we need to know how you stand with your money. Let's take a look at live cattle and what they did uh, yesterday. We are going to be open in about six and a half, seven minutes here. 
That D's contract was down yesterday. Um, let's look at Feb. Feb was off a buck forty at one thirty seven ninety. We had April off a buck forty five as well. So live cattle really uh, rolled over yesterday. And I'll tell you, when feeders rolled over yesterday, we had a little bit of a fight back in the deferreds, but uh, they were off even a little bit more before we closed. Uh, yesterday we started off really worried about this Omicron uh, variant uh, for the first part of the day. In the, second, in the middle part of the day, we were worried about how the administration was going to handle it, right? What could be the knock-on effects, what bad decisions they might make to kind of screw up the economy. And then finally, uh, when we had Jay Powell, uh, the chairman of the Fed, say that he thought that we should take um, <clears throat> transitory out of the vocabulary and he was going to continue on his tightening pace and actually make it faster, boy, oh boy, the markets really rolled over. We saw equities roll over, and then I watched feeder cattle roll over in front of my very eyes, even though we saw a, a cheaper a cheaper corn board. All right, let's take a quick look at Lean Hogs. We'll get back to Brian Hoops. Lean Hogs, uh, what did they do yesterday? They were off as well, 95 cents in Feb, 79.97, but we had a 65-cent loss in April and 57-cent loss in May. All right, how about uh, bringing back in Brian? Brian, sorry, I took up a lot of time talking there, but um, have at it. The floor is yours. What do you think about livestock and where they're going to open today? Uh, you know, we could see, I think, a little bit of recovery in this cattle market. We've been down in a couple days uh, in a row here fairly hard. We saw some steady type cash trade yesterday, but it was a limited volume, so really not enough to make the market. Some 218 on a dress basis, and that was very, very light. Most of the asking prices are 220 today. Um, so we'll be, uh, you know, closely monitoring the cash. But it just it does seem like we've uh, we've been looking ahead to the seasonal tendency and the stock market being down yesterday. With uh, the stock market trying to recover, maybe we can see a little bounce in the in the live cattle. Of course, uh, logic would tell us if corn remains higher, feeder cattle should struggle. But uh, you know, these markets haven't been very logical recently, so we'll see if they, <laughs> they can uh, maintain that pace. But yeah, we we'll, would look for a little bit of a bounce in the cattle market. Anyway. They've been schizophrenic is what they've been. All right, that's Brian Hoops. He's coming to us from Springfield, Missouri. We're back here in Nashville. We're going to throw this one back over to Tammy.